Hi dear medicals, welcome to medical students corner, myself Dr. Krishneshwari. So in the previous session we were dealing with the causes of syncope. We have discussed about the first cause of syncope, is it not? So today we are going to discuss the other causes of syncope, differential diagnosis of syncope and also evaluation of a patient with syncope. So regarding the second cause of syncope, it is cerebrovascular disorders. So this cerebrovascular disorders, uh, this uh, syncope due to cerebrovascular disorders is very very rare. Okay. So the most important cause of uh, syncope in regard with the cerebrovascular disorder is vertebrobasilar dysfunction or vertebrobasilar insufficiency. Okay, vertebrobasilar insufficiency. So, this is the most important cause of syncope in regard to this cerebrovascular disorders. And also, the second cause is when there is stenosis. So, bilateral stenosis of the carotid artery. So, these are the two most important causes of syncope in regard to the cerebrovascular disorders. You understand? So, this is very rare condition uh, in which the syncope comes uh, only in concern with the cerebrovascular disorder. The third most important cause of syncope is cardiovascular disorders. So, this cardiovascular disorders, we can divide the cardiovascular disorders into three. Okay, the causes in cardiovascular disorders is divided into three. One is bradyarrhythmia. Bradyarrhythmia. Second is tachyarrhythmia. Bradyarrhythmia, tachyarrhythmia, and third is other causes. Other causes. Okay. So, what is arrhythmia? Arrhythmia is change in rhythm. Yeah. Rhythm of the heart. Rhythm of the heart. So, this bradyarrhythmia is there is reduced. So, when the heart rate is reduced than 30, then it is known as bradyarrhythmia. Then tachyarrhythmia, the heart rate is more than 180. 180. So, as far as a normal person is concerned with a normal heart, if the heart rate ranges between 30 and 180, then the cerebral perfusion will be normal. So, as the cerebral perfusion is normal, there is no chance of syncope. But if the heart rate is less than 30 or if the heart rate is more than 180, then there is change in the stroke volume. Okay, change in the stroke volume which leads to reduced cerebral blood flow leading to syncope. So, Brady arrhythmia. So, let us see what are the uh, changes, what are the change in rhythm of the heart which leads to reduced heart rate than 30. So, we will see. So, first is you just think what uh, is the change in rhythm which leads to reduced heart rate. The first important thing is AV block, AV block. So, AV block there is uh, there is block in the what impulse, la, transmission of impulse. Then next is SA arrest. Sinoatrial arrest, there is no production of impulse. So, sinoatrial arrest or less production of impulse. Sinoatrial arrest and the most important thing is sick sinus syndrome. Sick sinus syndrome. So, these are the most important change in rhythm of the heart which leads to reduced heartbeat. So, it leads to syncope. You understand? Second is tachyarrhythmia. That is when there is heart rate greater than 190. 190. So, what happens is, so what are the conditions? What may be the conditions? The most important thing is atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation. Second is atrial flutter. Parkinson White syndrome, there is re entry of the impulse, is it not? So, it leads to change in rhythm, leading to increased heart rate. So, these are the three most important conditions which leads to tachyarrhythmia, leading to defect in the stroke volume, leading to reduced cerebral perfusion and syncope. Next, we will see the other causes. So, in other causes, it includes the causes which, uh, which, is, which leads to uh, what uh, reduced blood uh, pumping from the heart. So, most important thing is aortic stenosis, 
mitral stenosis then when there is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy and also in severe cases of mi severe cases of mi there will be reduced what pumping of blood from the heart leading to reduced cerebral blood flow leading to syncope so these are the most important conditions as far as our cardiovascular disorder is concerned which leads to syncope it is very very easy you just think what are the thing which leads to reduced what is the what are the things uh, which leads to reduced heart rate when there is change in rhythm so uh, like that tachyarrhythmia and also other causes very very important and these are the most important cause which leads to syncope okay so uh, this is the third cause which leads to syncope by this we have completed the causes of syncope understand next we are going to the differential diagnosis of syncope you just think it will be very easy so you just think what are the causes which leads which mimics like that of syncope we have to differentiate from syncope so first cause is hysteria so in hysterical syncope hysteria the patient may, will be falling down there is loss of consciousness and the patient will not be responding when the patient is made in horizontal position we are told that in reflex syncope the patient will respond is it not when the patient is made to lie in horizontal position but in case of hysterical syncope there is no response when the patient lie in patient is made to lie in horizontal position and also there will not be any other signs that is there will not be reduced blood pressure there will not be reduced pulse there will not be uh, reduced that imperceptible respiration and all then the, we can say the patient is having hysterical syncope second is panic attack panic attack this panic attack it is due to anxiety is it not so this anxious patient also mimics like that of syncope here also uh, the patient will be having uh, what uh, there will be increased uh, palpitation the patient complains of chest pain the patient complains of lightheadedness and all but what uh, we cannot see any other um, symptoms in regard to the syncope in case of panic attack and investigation will be showing and also history taking will not give any clue of syncope in case of panic attack third is hypoglycemia in case of hypoglycemia the patient will be going for disorientation disorientation and also there is chance of loss of consciousness uh, so by uh, testing the blood sugar we can understand if the patient is diabetic especially and if the patient is going for syncope like condition you should go for blood sugar estimation and that is how we will be differentiating hypoglycemia from that of syncope and the fourth important thing is seizures seizures some of the seizures mimics syncope in case of seizures most of the convulsive seizures what happens is there will be tonic clonic seizures will be there tonic clonic movement of the body will be there and also there will be urinary incontinence in case of seizure which is not seen in syncope and also after seizure the patient will be having headache headache and also there will be confusion but in case of syncope what happens there will not be any confusion there will be only physical weakness there will not be any uh, what uh, mental confusion in case of syncope that is the way we will be differentiating syncope from that of seizures and also this loss of consciousness that period is prolonged in case of seizures but in syncope it will be lasting for only short time understand so this is the way how we will be differentiating seizures from that of syncope you understand so these are the most important differential diagnosis for syncope so we will be we are coming to the conclusion of the session that is evaluation of the patient with syncope so what are the things we should evaluate when a patient comes to our clinic with syncope?
syncope. When a patient is brought to our clinic with syncope, the most important thing we should evaluate is whether there is any emergency condition such that when there is what um, as you cranial intracranial hemorrhage or whether there is painless MI or whether there is any cardiac arrhythmia. These are the most important things we should evaluate first when a patient is brought with loss of consciousness. Then like that after this evaluation the most important thing is history taking. As uh, we are uh, what are discussing in all the uh, symptoms that the first step of evaluation is history taking. By history taking, if we are if we are uh, having if we are having doubt whether the patient is having any cardiac problem, then we should go for what ECG first. We should in ECG we can see the bradyarrhythmia, brady uh, tachyarrhythmia, and all. Is it not so? Uh, first in cardio if we are suspecting cardiovascular disorders the first thing is ECG second is echocardiogram echocardiogram and third is stress test so these are the most important test stress test so these are the most important test we should do if we are suspecting some cause in relation to cardiovascular disorders then we are suspecting something in relation to uh, nerves. So, we should go for both peripheral neuropathy test and also what central nervous system examination. We should be having, we should do a correct central nervous system examination and also the investigations relating to that. Mostly, we will be doing MRI. Okay, in central nervous system, central nervous system, we will be doing MRI. Then our Doppler, Doppler study of vertebro, vertebro basilar vasculature, vasculature, X-ray Doppler X-ray study of vertebro basilar vasculature. X-ray Doppler study of vertebro basilar vasculature. So these are the most important things, most important investigations we should do as far as syncope is concerned. And in order to differentiate it from hypoglycemia, you can go for blood sugar estimation. And also if you are suspecting seizures, so in order to differentiate whether it is an episode of seizure or whether it is syncope, what is the investigation of choice? It is EEG, electroencephalogram electroencephalogram. So, these are the most important investigations we should do in case of uh, what syncope. So, you should take the history first. From the history you evolve why the syncope happened, what is the cause, what may be the cause behind the syncope and you go for the particular lab investigation. You understand. So, these are the important points as regard to the syncope. So, we have completed syncope in this session. Hope you have understand. If you are having any doubt, please you comment in the comment box. We will discuss again. So, next time we will be meeting uh, with what another symptom on neurology. A most important symptom. It is a suspense. Okay. Most important symptom. So, if you are happy with me, if you are happy with my session, if you are happy with our channel, please subscribe, share. So, happy learning. Thank you so much.